So I'm with Jerry Ellsworth. Hello. AI 6TK. In her motorhome here with Amy, who's behind me. With a competing... Uh, uh, amateur logic. Oh, boy. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. We love everyone. I don't have K7AGE t-shirts. You don't? So. We'll see if you had, I would buy if that. you had the t-shirts, we'd buy them. That, oh, okay. See? Yeah. All right, folks. So here we are at Quartzsite, or Quartzfest, and Jerry's got something in her hand here that she's built. So I zipped this guy together really quick. This is a little um, QRP transceiver, a little directional coupler so I can do some SWR, some batteries to run the whole thing. Uh, loading coil um, from, this is actually a silent key. Um, my wife gave me this. And then a really long antenna so I can do 40 meters. So I was sitting at the campfire doing uh, JT65 with uh, cool. my 10 foot antenna sticking and up in Android tablet. Uh, yeah. and Android tablet. So it's all self contained. Yeah. Portable JT65. What well, was the app that you found for that? Uh, Android JT65. Okay. Unfortunately, not too many people are using uh, JT65 these days. So I'm. So I was thinking you need to find an FT8 application. There isn't. Like, I'm super surprised that there is an FT8 and there's only one JT65 app. Okay, oh. internets, get on this. Yeah. Yeah, or, or we're going to have to do it. <laughs> That's right. Or Jerry will. <laughs> So anyway, we, uh, I whipped this together just before Quartz Fest, the night before. So just wow. bent a little piece of uh, ABS. I know I'm not supposed to heat ABS, but I did it anyway. And drilled a hole, put this loading coil on there, and tuned it up. Um, so <laughs> had to uh, get Amy to uh, listen to oh, me yeah, transmitting so, so we make sure it was working. I uh, KX3 and oh, okay. see if I could hear so, coming through. So my only QSO was right here in camp, which is mm. kind of makes me sad, but... So what else do you have on the table here? What is I, can, it? I can only see this side. <sighs> Bunch of stuff. So uh, 7300, uh, running off of a LifePo battery. You know, the... <coughs> LifePo 4 battery. Oh, okay. Yeah. How big is this guy? Uh, is that like the... Um, is that the 100 amp, 100 amp hour? 100 amp hour or something? Oh, we've, been, we've been chewing on this battery all week and it's still going. Even tried to make coffee off of it once, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and then Amy, explain your stuff. Oh, I've just got my KX3 set up over here with my PX3, and then my laptop to do JT65. Which you know, of course, last night I tried to do JT65, and the entire spectrum was just splattered with FT8. So I think I need to start doing FT8 now. Yes. So. And your call is? Uh, AI6. Oh, let's see if I can. ZU. ZU. There we go. There cool. we go. Zombie unicorns. Zombie unicorns. Zombie unicorns. <laughs> and down here I've got a little Butterworth bandpass filter that I've been using. It's uh, set up for HF, so everything from 10 meter, 20 meter, 40 meter, and 80 meter. So that we get a little bit of filtering going on, especially with all of these other hams all around the campground. You kind of have to have a filter. And that, who made that? I made that. You made that? Yeah, I made that. I wound all the, the little toroids and... Oh, cool. Yeah. I need to get it in a case now, so I need to get it in a case with a little switch so I can just quickly switch which band I want to yeah. filter on. Very good. I'm always surprised so. how many people are scared to wind their own toroids. Oh, it did, yeah. It didn't scare Amy off. She just, like, got out there and wound them like, like a pro. You get yourself a good uh, meter, and then you can, you know, test the the toroids afterwards, make sure that you're hitting the right the right frequencies. So yeah. Non-paid advertisement? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what is that? I love these. I got this because I was winding these these guys and I wanted to make sure that I could actually oh, okay. figure out. So what we have here is the uh, the LCR meter. Okay. This thing is fantastic. Yeah. So, and then we also have uh, down here the, um, what is this guy? I don't think I, is this the, is this the one that you check? Tran transistor checker. Oh, oh yeah, okay. that's the transistor no. checker. That thing is amazing. This thing's amazing. It can determine whether it's a transistor, a regulator, an yeah. SCR, a triac. Like here, I can just gra grab any this random is thing. Hard. Plug it in there. Yeah. This thing is so there, cool. Randomly put the wires on, you know, any which way, and it'll go through. Yeah, I've got the little cheap $17 China boards that do that too. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. This, this we got is over. well worth the money. Yeah. And that's, I'm, we're not even getting paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, How if you want a nice meter, this thing is something. Uh, I think it was over 100 for the 
All right, I already figured this one out. So this is an NPN Darlington BJT, and then it tells you all the colors of the... Yeah, which, which, which pins, pins which. Yeah, which pins the, which. The one that shocked me is it can figure out voltage regulators, and sometimes it can tell you at what voltage it's regulator, and it can tell you if it's a voltage reference versus a... Oh, my God. I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> How do they do that? <laughs> it's magic. Software. <laughs> it's pretty Darn awesome. Darn software, people. You're the one that built the electronics. Okay, it's just a transmitter only. So. It's just a transmitter. Just a transmitter. So what do you got here? Okay, so this is a little QRP transmitter that um, I built a little over a year ago to go on a, a boat trip, a Holland America trip, uh, where they um, didn't really want us to do ham radio stuff, so we thought we'd do a little uh, uh, PSK, Stealth. uh, stealthy stuff and do... Uh, whisper? Whisper. Yep. And so... What I have here is a little commutating modulator that I built, um, made a custom crystal. Why don't you explain what a commutating modulator is? So instead of just mixing um, a uh, local oscillator, um, which is just a single phase, you actually mix with switches. So you have four switches and you have four different phases and you have a, uh, a local oscillator that's four times the the frequency you want to modulate on. But an interesting part of this uh, transmitter is I didn't have a 28 megahertz crystal. So, and I didn't have a 14 megahertz crystal that was correct. So what it is, I took a 14 megahertz crystal, opened it, put it in a sputter coater, and I coated metal onto the crystal until I lowered the frequency exactly so it would be right into band. Oh, well, and back in my day, we would open them up and get some toothpaste <laughs> and a toothbrush and kind of grind oh, it yeah. down a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> it's a little trickier now that uh, they have the uh, plated, silver plated contacts oh. on there. But I was able to take some crystal, I don't remember, it was probably 8 megahertz, and bring it down to, I have it written on here, or I mean, uh, it was probably 15 megahertz. I brought it down to 14.152. And, but that doesn't get me my four phases. So digitally in a little CPLD, I, uh, CPLD? Complex Programmable Logic Device. Okay. I uh, used both edges of the clock and I was able to double the frequency and get all the phases that I need just using mm. rising and falling edge flip-flops. Okay. So I was proud of myself to do that. Yeah. So that's kind of this section here. So this does the modulation. There's a little uh, transmit relay here that turns my power amplifier off. So this is just a little Class A power amplifier. Um, little little I mean this thing is just really is just whispering but um, and then Amy put together a really nice box and we wanted to look like a, a MIDI or a guitar effects pedal so it's got all <laughs> kinds of things that says like MIDI in audio uh, instrument and power and then she made some clever if you're into video games clever little logos uh, the radiation king which oh, okay. is part of Fallout video game yeah, series. Right. Yeah. And also, it's a little bit of a crossover there, so if you're uh, Dr. Strangelove. Mm. <laughs> oh, <you're running> Bob. <laughs> and if, if they were really smart and they actually checked this thing, they'd see right on the rocket here, I put JT65. Oh, okay. oh rocket JT65. Yeah, that's right. We weren't doing Whisper, we were doing JT65. Okay. But really, Back. really low QRP. Back when people did JT65, yeah. so last year. I know. So last year. So last, year. <laughs> so last month. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we had a little mag mount antenna which is on the side of the cabin, and uh, we were able to get into North America from. Uh, we were on the uh, starboard side of the ship. Which was interesting. Yeah. Thought we'd get Japan. So, starboard side of the ship on the Pacific Ocean heading south, and we thought we would, our propagation would be out um, over the Pacific Ocean. Maybe we'd get Japan or something. When we checked PSK Reporter later, we were actually pretty surprised. We ended up getting into the States. So. Cool. Yeah, it let's, was fun. <laughs> let's go outside. Yeah, let's go outside. <laughs>